Hello, I'm Robert Lees. And I'm Colleen Lees. In 2012, we opened the Soil Kitchen to give Central Iowa gardeners a natural gardening option. Fast forward to 2015, and the United Nations declares 2015 the year of the soil. You can hardly get away from climate change in the news today. So we wondered, is there a connection between soil and climate change? So over the next eight minutes or so, we're going to show you exactly what we found about that connection between soil and the climate. All the life that we see above the soil owes its life to the life in the soil. That's why the Living Soil Project exists today. Many of us simply don't appreciate what soil is or even know what soil does because we don't deal with it much at all in modern life. Nope, that's not soil, that's cement. Soil is the living skin of Earth. Maybe people who like eating? Tomatoes, corn, carrot, onion, celery, radish, pepper, squash, zucchini, lettuce, spinach, leek, okra, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumber, kohlrabi, beans, peas, cabbage, beets, turnips, or parsley. Or perhaps someone who likes... Watermelon, muskmelon, cantaloupe, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, cherries, apples, peaches, pears, plums, and boysenberries. Or maybe those who like... Chicken, beef, turkey, lamb, pork, rabbit, elk, buffalo, venison, goat, pheasant, or duck. Of course, anybody who wants to just breathe fresh air. Nope, that's asphalt, not soil. Let's take a look at a way carbon sequestration will actually prevent carbon dioxide from getting into the atmosphere in the first place. So large businesses, industries, and power plants who produce a lot of carbon dioxide know that we need to keep that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. One of the ways that we can do this is instead of taking the emissions from these businesses and letting it go right into the atmosphere, we fit pipes to that business and pump all the emissions, all the carbon dioxide, into the ground. These pipes go deep into the ground, which is extremely expensive, to make sure the carbon dioxide doesn't come back into the atmosphere. This would be a way of preventing carbon dioxide. Using electric cars charged from solar cells or wind turbines, producing your own electricity with solar cells or wind power, growing your own food so it doesn't need to be delivered, and buying products made locally instead of being shipped around the world to you. These are all examples of preventing carbon dioxide from getting into the atmosphere. Unfortunately, prevention is not what we have been doing. Since 1900, we have put over 1,400 gigatons worth of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That's 1 trillion 400 billion tons of carbon dioxide that has been put into the atmosphere. Not quite. That's sand. So the way that we can sequester carbon is a little bit different. Colleen, tell us how we can do it. The first step in this process is something we all learned about in grade school. Photosynthesis. For a brief refresher, photosynthesis is the process plants use to produce their own food. Keep in mind, this isn't a college level crash course on photosynthesis, we're just going to cover the basics. It's a complicated chemical reaction that requires plants, water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. For this demonstration, let's agree that our tree here is getting its water from the soil and its carbon dioxide from the air. As you may know, water is H2O and carbon dioxide is CO2. That's going to be important here shortly. Energy from the sun meets with water and carbon dioxide in the leaves of the plant. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other minerals in the soil enable our tree's specialized cells to use the sun's energy to combine water and carbon dioxide to form an amazing molecule. It's important to note that this molecule is made up of only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This molecule's name is fructose. It's a sugar, C6H12O6. This means that for every molecule of sugar, there are six atoms of carbon. This sugar is used by the plant to grow. For most fifth grade science classes, this is where the story ends. For the Living Soil Project, this is just where things get interesting. 
All the sugar that made the top of the plant grow also makes the root of the plant grow. Let's take a closer look at what happens with all that fructose in the roots of our tree. So we are going to draw our happy little tree here with some nice little roots there. What are the roots surrounded by? Soil. Interesting fact about soil, the best soil has sand, silt, and clay particles. Only 5% of these little dots are comprised of organic matter. That number may seem small, but it's very important as we'll soon find out later in this video. The fructose made in the leaves of our tree is now being sent down to its roots. Not only do roots absorb water and nutrients from the soil, they also deposit fructose into the soil for future use. The final step in this process is the one that can help heal our planet. This is also the step that most people are unaware of and don't realize they can improve. Not all of the fructose released into the soil is used by the plant. Lurking in the spaces between soil particles, Many varieties of bacteria and fungi lie in wait for the fructose to be released. This is an easy and nutritious meal for these organisms. Not only are these microscopic critters waiting around for a free meal, they are also waiting around for a free drink. When it rains, the empty spaces between soil particles are filled with water. As the water drains deeper into the soil, it is replaced by air containing carbon dioxide. Many of these microorganisms are able to then use carbon dioxide as food and not have to wait for the fructose. That's how it's supposed to work. However, after testing hundreds of soil samples, a trend was found. Soil under grass is, well, underappreciated, and there is a lot of grass out there. This is the point where you and the soil kitchen can make a big difference. Once you have participated in the Living Soil Project by choosing your level of support, then the Soil Kitchen will get to work improving the ability to sequester carbon in the soils of land used only by nonprofit organizations. First, the Soil Kitchen will test the soil. Then the Soil Kitchen will deliver the products to loosen the soil, add life to the soil, and feed the life in the soil. There are a lot of products that we can use, but the soil test will tell us exactly which ones will be best. Schools, parks, soccer fields, baseball diamonds, churches, football fields, and the like have large areas of grass with soil underneath that is very likely not able to breathe and capture carbon dioxide. Many of these locations simply don't get the funding needed to improve the soil. This is thousands of acres of land that is simply not doing its part to pull carbon dioxide out of the air. As the amount of organic matter in the soil increases, the amount of carbon captured by the land increases dramatically taking the soil from a 1.7% organic matter to a 4.7% organic matter will increase the amount of carbon stored in the soil by over 32,000 pounds of carbon per acre. You got it! That's soil! In 2015 was declared the year of the soil by the United Nations. They list the soil's abilities to sequester carbon and combat climate change as one of the main reasons we need to revitalize our soil. 2015 also brought about record heat indexes of 165 degrees in Iran, three simultaneous Category 4 hurricanes in the Pacific Ocean, and the most powerful hurricane in recorded history. Patricia raged towards the Mexican coast as a powerful Category 5 hurricane with wind speeds topping 200 miles an hour. As world temperatures rise, these events are going to continue to intensify with magnitude and frequency. The world climate summits are proving that the agreements coming back aren't going to be enough to prevent CO2 from getting into the atmosphere and won't come close to mitigating the CO2 that's already there. We need to take matters in our own hands and fund the Living Soil Project. So please contribute to the Living Soil Project so we can take action to help mitigate climate change. We have support levels to fit every budget, so please make your selection today and take a few seconds to share this campaign with your friends, family, and neighbors and encourage them to become part of the Living Soil Project as well. 
Thank you for your time and thank you for your support. Thank you.